trig. 3.3, the unit circle and circular functions. So what is the unit circle? Well, it's a circle of radius 1. So what are circular functions? Well, it's really the trig functions thought of on the unit circle. If the radius is 1, then all of our definitions that we've had, and you'll have a quiz on these three parts, we know how to find the sine of some angle theta, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. When you use x, y, and r, when you use o, a, and h, and now the unit circle. So, I will be asking these. You will get to supply the answers. This is y over r, x over r, y over x, x over y, r over x, and r over y. As far as the O, A, and H, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent, adjacent over opposite, the hypotenuse over the adjacent, and the hypotenuse over the opposite. The unit circle is when r is equal to 1, so all these r's become a 1, and then you just write down the rest. So it's y over 1, x over 1, y over x, there's no r involved, x over y, no r involved, and 1 over x, and 1 over y. So this is what you'll be asked on the quiz, one at a time for each of these. There's 3 times 6, or 18 points for this. I'll have to take that online in my LSMSA. So, now that you know all these definitions, we should be able to do almost anything. One of those things that's sort of interesting, for the unit circle, S equals R theta, theta and radians, I'm sorry, radians, not degrees. If R is 1, then S equals theta. On the unit circle, at least in radians, this distance and that distance are the same on the unit circle. Sort of like with degrees, the central angle for any circle is the same as the arc angle measure of any circle. This one you must have a radius of 1. There is an awful lot of information built into this unit circle and some students, as well as some instructors, like to use it sort of completely instead of the little table that I write. This is a good exercise to go all the way around the circle. Zero degrees is zero radians. 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. Oh, there's a 45 in here. 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. And then if you keep on going, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but let's at least do one more quadrant. This is 120 degrees, and that is 2 pi over 3. And that seems to me to be easier. This is 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. Pi over 4 is 1, 2, 3. This is 3 pi over 4. 
what is it in degrees? Oh, let's see, it's 90 and 45, so it's 135. This is almost a pi, which of course is 180 degrees, but it's 30 degrees or pi over 6 too small. So this is not 6 pi over 6, this is 5 pi over 6, which is 30 degrees less than 180, 150 degrees. And you should be able to go around the whole circle and do all those special angles. What's also special in a different color is the the coordinates of the angle here, not the coordinates of the port on point on the circle. This point is um, let's do this in first, I guess. This is the point one zero. And what's important for all of these on the unit circle, r equals one, is that these are cosine theta and sine theta. Remember, because r is one, we don't need that. We just need x. We just need y. So the cosine of zero is one. The sine of zero is zero. This is one half and the square root of 3 over 2 special angles. This one is the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. This one, you flip the 30 degrees, it's the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. And this, you flip the 0 degrees, this is now 0, 1 instead of 1, 0. And then you sort of repeat all those values around the rest of the circle. Some of them are now negative instead of positive. But it's really the same values all the way around. And it's, like I said, a good exercise when you have all your free time to do that. To see if you understand all those. Now we're also going to talk about the domains of the circular functions. For sine and cosine, that's the same. The domain goes from a negative infinity to a positive infinity. All real numbers work. If you're using radians, this is in radians. And we'll be graphing in radians too. For the tangent and the secant. Now, why don't I choose those? Because the tangent is sine over cosine. The secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine is the denominator. And you have to throw out all those values that would cause division by 0. So it's the set of all x such that x is not equal to anything that would cause division by zero. Well, let's see. Um, division by zero happens when you've got zero for x. There'd be a zero for x here at 90, and one at 3 pi over 2, or 270. So we'll do this in the radians, pi over 2. But let's um, go around all these. Um, we'll do a plus or minus n pi. So it could be at 90 or 270, or then the 360 plus 90, or then, and keep bouncing back and forth, half a circle bounce. That's why it's n pi. n here is an element of the integers for all this stuff z integers. For the cotangent and the cosecant, the denominator for the cotangent is cosine. The x, the denominator for the, I'm sorry, 
is sine the x. The denominator for the cosecant is sine the y, not the x. Sine is y. Golly, I'm going to confuse you yet. So we're going to throw out all those spots where the y is 0. Let's see, the y is 0 at 0. The y is also 0 at 180. So this is going to be the same type of thing. It's going to be x cannot be. You can start at pi, but then you can go forwards and backwards. You could even start at 0, jumping half a circle at a time. So this could just be n pi, because pi plus n pi is just another pi. You could say n pi. Those are the domains of the trig functions. Now, we need to go through some examples of our trig functions in this section. The ones we're going to look at, number six. So let's at least get through that one. This is on page, hopefully these pages are right, 117. Number six. Find each of the real number s, for each real number s, find the sine and the cosine and the tangent. So, if s is equal to, why they use s, I'm not sure, negative 3 pi over 2. Now, you need some steps, but this is a quadrantal angle, right? It is the bottom right here. The coordinates of that point are 0, negative 1. So, remember, this is the cosine and the sine, the x and the y. put all that down here you should get the four steps so the sine of s is equal to negative one the cosine of s is equal to zero the tangent of s is a negative one over zero sine over cosine or undefined and you can find the rest by using these ratios and your trig identities. We'll continue this on the next video. So we're done with number six. What about number eight? Here we're supposed to, according to the directions, find the exact circular function value for each of the following. So I'm going to put this exact value. And they're saying for number 8, cosine of 5 pi over 3. Well, let's see. Where is 5 pi over 3? Here's 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, seems pi, 4 pi over 3, there's 5 pi over 3. That has a reference angle of pi over 3. So, what is the cosine of pi over 3? You can do this a lot of different ways. One is with a right triangle, since pi over 3 is a 60 degree angle, or 30 here. This is as easy as 1, 2, squared 3. That's one way of remembering these special angles. So the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse 2. And in the fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive. So it would stay positive one half. That's how you do number eight. How about number 20? Well, 
well, let's move this down a little bit. Did I move this when I did this? Hmm. Number 20. So, for number 20, they want the same thing. Find the exact circular function values. They want the cosecant of 13 pi over 3. Well, what is 13 pi over 3? Round the circle once is 2 pi, which is how many pi over 3s? That's 6 pi over 3. Around the circle twice is 12 pi over 3. One more pi over 3 winds up in the first quadrant with a reference angle of pi over 3. So this is really 1 over the sine. So what is the sine of pi over 3? Now once again, if we look at a right triangle, 60 is the pi over 3. This is as easy as 1, 2, square root of 3. The sine is the opposite, square root of 3 over the hypotenuse 2. So the cosecant is... Oh, and we're in quadrant 1, so it's positive. 2 over the square root of 3. And when you rationalize the denominator, 2 the square root of 3 over 3. Should be good. So now, look at number 34. Here they want the calculator approximation. Of this, so let's see. For 34, it's the cotangent, 3.8426. The cotangent, 3.8426. Let's find out what quadrant we're in. Let's see, pi over 2 is 1.57, pi is 3.14, still too small. 3 pi over 2 is when we add these together, that's the 11, 7, 5.71, right? No, no, 4.71. So, anyway, it's really smaller than that 4.71. We are in quadrant 3. This is the 3.8426. So, that means the cotangent is positive. Again, check. Picked all these positive ones, but you've got to check it. We don't really want the cotangent, because the cotangent is 1 over tangent. of uh, 3.8426. And to find that, we have to get our calculator up, turn it on. Now, we're finding trig function values, but these are no longer degrees, so make sure when you find these trig function values, you're in the correct mode. We need to be in radian mode. And now we can do this. 1 divided by the tangent of 3.8426 and that gives me the value 1.1848 I guess we should say 481 so how many places do we go? Well, because our angle was four decimal places, we're going to go four decimal places. We could go back to that table also, I guess. 1.1848. One eight, 
That's the value of the tank or the cotangent of 3.8426. Okay. So now let's do number 50. Here they want you, without using a calculator, just decide whether the function is positive or negative. And they're asking for number 50, the tangent of a negative 6.29. Well, because of what we did before, Negative means we're going clockwise. Once around is 2 pi or 6.28 plus some more decimals, but they want us to go a little bit further, so they're just going to peek into this fourth quadrant. And we know in the fourth quadrant, the tangent, because all seniors take Cal 4, only the cosine and secant are positive in the fourth quadrant, so the tangent must be negative. So let's do number 66. They give us, we're supposed to find the sign. Find the sine of this angle, S. We're given that S is in the interval from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. That's the fourth quadrant. We're also given that the cosine of S is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So to get all these steps, we're going to draw pictures and write down lots of things. Uh, 3 pi over 2 is here. 2 pi is here. So we're talking about this fourth quadrant again. The cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. So if we go back to our table, and I think this works, once you write this once, you wouldn't have to write it a bunch of times. The tangent of some angle theta is the sine, and you could write this at the beginning of your test, the beginning of your paper, square root of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 2 the square root of 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 over 2, 4, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2, which is 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And once you've got that, then you say, okay, um, if the cosine is square root of 3 over 2, which is down here, square root of 3 over 2, we're looking at a reference angle of pi over 6. And pi over 6, then, is this angle right here. So what must this angle be? Well, it's a pi over 6 less than 2 pi. How many pi over 6s is this 2 pi? Well, that's 12 pi over 6. It's 1 pi over 6 less. So, S is 11 pi over 6. I'm sorry. And the sine of that should be the 11 pi over 6. And the sine of 11 pi over 6 is any pi over 6. It is 1 half. But we are in quadrant 4. So it's a negative one-half. So you can find a lot of things. This little table 
gives you a lot of information also.